not trying to parallel park this thing. It's it's actually pretty good. When I was a kid, this was stock car racing. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, 1964 Dodge Polara Street Wedge 426 with a four-speed. This is not a Hemi, it's a 426 wedge engine. This is the one that came before the Hemi. You know, it's funny, whenever they talk about the muscle car era, they always start in 1964 with the GTO, and they go to about 1970. Those were sort of the premium years. but. There was a lot happening before 1964. The Ram Charger, certainly from Dodge. This is a really fast car. The Aston Martin, the DB5, was the performance car of the early 60s. That would go zero up to 100, slam on the brakes, and stop. I think in a 27 seconds, something like that, 26 point something. It's a little bit bigger than the GTO and the midsize cars, but it has more than enough horsepower to make up for it. I used to read about these all the time when I was a kid. This one has a four speed. I never saw one with a four speed where I lived in Massachusetts. Everybody got the automatic or they get the Dodge Player with the 383. That was pretty much the big standard motor. Then there was a the 318 and a few other ones, but I always thought it was a great looking car. Uh, this is original paint, except for the roof. When I got it, the roof was silver. It was jacked up, had uh, American mags on it. Here's a picture of it. I'm only a third owner of this car, and I think this was only driven a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> the guy uh, was a pretty ardent racer who had this. I even like the period uh, decals or transfers, or whatever you call them on here. There's an old Hearst one from the 60s. Notice the full bathing suit, of course, and genuine Mopar parts. And it's just, this is what performance cars look like when I was a kid. The big giant wide tires we see now were not available, but this was considered a big tire. Uh, I brought it down to standard height. We put Willwood disc brakes all the way around to make it stop. I'm not trying to do a proper restoration on it. I just want to make it a fun street car. It's got a 323 rear end in it, which uh, it's not a high performance rear end, but it's great for on the freeway and cruising. You know, you put a 411 or a 390 or something in it, and the engine's just screaming at 60 miles an hour, and, and there's, there's no reason for that. So this is nice. Someone also put these side marker lights on it. These are from Chrysler products later in the 60s. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty stock. Uh, these have a real cool set of factory headers. I'll show you those in just a minute. Well, show them to you right now. Pull the hood pins. I always love hood pins. These are the factory cast iron headers, as you can see. Notice the way they go down, up and down over, which is kind of cool. Uh, MSD ignition, obviously not stock. Optima battery, not stock. We like those. Willwood disc brakes. Now the standard, the normal, when I got this, it had a single uh, mass cylinder, not a dual master cylinder. And uh, you know, those are pretty dangerous. And it was a little bit lower, and you always ran the risk of the header boiling the, the, uh, the, the brake fluid. So we moved this Willwood brake master up about another inch and a half just to get it out of the direct heat. We put electric cutouts in it, which make it sound pretty good, stainless steel exhaust. We did new shocks all the way around. We just wanted to make it a nice roadworthy cars and coffee street car. Uh, alternator went out the other day, so we put another one on. It's just easier to replace it, trying to fix an alternator. Um, it's got the uh, Offenhauser manifold on there. With that. So this is an Edelbrock also. Normally when you see these on the, on the Max Wedge race cars, they had the duels and they were staggered, two four barrels, and they used to say uh, it was not streetable, it was not, and they really weren't. They were just out and out race cars, 13 and a half to one compression ratio. It's funny when you read the road tests about these cars. You know, I went and I got one of my old, I love all those book of road tests for every conceivable year. And I picked up 64 Dodge Polaro and they have one of these that was a convertible with a four speed with a 426 street wedge. And uh, it said in the article, it said, uh, 
Now don't let the fact that this has electric windows and a little chrome switch to put the top down let you think it's some effeminate vehicle. It isn't. This is a man's car. I mean, stuff you would <laughs> you couldn't get away with today. It just it just it just made me laugh. I just I just thought that was funny. And you know, it's still impressive. You've got all kinds of torque. As I said, it's based on the 413. Uh, it's taken out to 426. And then later, the 426 Hemi came out in 66. Well, it actually came out in 64 for racing, but uh, the first street version, I think, was 66 or even late 65, possibly. And that, the max wedge was kind of relegated out the best. So there's always sort of a mystique about these, but the, I always thought they were just a great sounding engine, great looking engine. And it never gets mentioned with the GTO and, uh, you know, the Barracudas and the Mustangs and all that, probably because it's a little bit bigger car. I guess this is what we used to call a full-size automobile. There were bigger ones, the Chrysler New Yorker and the Imperial, of course, but <clears throat> it's not that heavy. It's probably 3,400 pounds. Don't forget you have absolutely no safety equipment of any kind, except the seat belts, that's about it. But I'm running the stock radiator. It runs cool, it runs fine. Yeah, let me shut this again. What else can we show you? This is my favorite year for Dodge. I didn't like the 63s. I didn't like the 65s. That was back in the day when uh, they came out with a new design every single year. They don't really do that much anymore. Uh, the Dodge Challenger, you know, it's pretty much the same. They just keep refining it, which I think is a smart thing to do. Uh, you've got four seats, obviously, uh, buckets in the front. Uh, the tachometer is hilariously in the, on the end of the transmission tunnel. So when you drive, you have to go like this. How many RPM? And you kind of crash into stuff. So you just sort of shift by ear. Because if you're looking at that tack while you're trying to drive, it's a little crazy. Uh, it had a big Hearst T-shifter on it. And I went on eBay and found the original 1964 white shift ball on there. It looks like a cue ball, which I really like. I like the dog dish hubcaps with just, uh, well, what was considered big tires back in the day. I always like this pagoda roof that they did this year. It kind of looks like, uh, you know, the 280SL Mercedes, the pagoda top that comes off. I think that's kind of a nice look because the 63 was just sort of awkward. And this one is a Polara, so it had some of the options uh, outside mirror and uh, bucket seats and console and trim package. They did a lot of racing with these uh, Max Wedge cars. So they even went so far as aluminum front end and all kinds of stuff. But they're all stripped out inside, no sound deadening. This is just a nice road car. This would be the equivalent, I think, of a Hellcat today. You know, basically a big, comfortable car that's fast, that goes when you put your foot in it. And it really does. And I like the design. It sort of looks like the Chrysler turbine car. Uh, the guy who designed the turbine car, he came from Ford. And, uh, and this has some of those elements to it. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? Let's see. Oh, yeah, everybody had gone to, uh, well, this does have duals, but it looks like a big single with a sort of driving light here. You know, when you grow up in a small town, there's always that guy in his late 30s, early 40s, who's divorced, you know, with this cigarettes. This is usually what they have. And they're always hanging around the gas station looking for a race, you know. And this is the kind of stuff they would race. I remember doing that when I was a kid, going with guys to uh, out on uh, 125, Route 125 to race, you know. And the, and the state police barracks are right there, which didn't make a lot of sense, yeah. But hey, when you're young, you're stupid, you know. And of course, you got a full-size trunk. Oh, look at this. And it's a real truck. Uh, look how big, look how big that trunk is. Uh, hilarious. And that's a full size spare with a jack. I mean, it, you, could, you could take six sets of golf clubs in this thing. It's still got the original jack instructions in there. And I mean, this car was well maintained, it was raced. But as you see, that's all original chrome, original paint, except for the roof. We repainted the roof. That's the only part we did. 
But come on, let's take it next door. I'll put it up on the lift, and uh, I'll show you the stainless steel exhaust and the electric cutouts, which are completely juvenile, but very cool. Okay, we've got the Polara up on our still Coney lifts. Let's start at the back. Well, obviously, you see the new gas tank. You know, for the price of it, get why bother? Just get a new one. They run about 300 bucks. It'll save you a lot of money in the long run. All stainless steel exhaust system here. Uh, the previous owner had these air shocks on. We kept those. Kept those on there. They work fine. Glass packs here. Stainless steel is the only way to go, especially on these things. Now, these are kind of cool. These are electric cutouts. See the electric motor right here? Get those from Summit Racing. And uh, you press a button that opens the exhaust right there and then uh, close it right up again. You know, in the old days, we called them lake pipes, and you had to take a, a wrench and unbolt them and take the plate off. And when the cops came, you can't get the plate on fast enough. As you can see, Bernard and Jimmy did a nice crossover here on the pipes. Give it a nice sound. Other than that, she's pretty much all stock. And there's our Willwood disc brakes in the front and in the back as well. Uh, there's the exhaust system there. You see where the header connects. New shocks in the front. And that's pretty much it. And uh, let's take for a ride. See, we got this in the back. You know, you can't go wrong. You know, drum brakes are nice, but boy, the speeds this thing is capable of, you know, it's well worth the investment. And Willwood, Willwood makes systems for almost certainly any American car. Even my Imperial, they did a custom set set up for me there. And it, it just makes the car really drivable because that thing weighs, I don't know, 5,500 pounds, something like that. And after three or four hard brakes, oh my God, you got nothing. Whereas now it stops on a dime every single time. So, there we go. All right, you ready to go for a ride? Let's do it. I'll show you those cutouts. Press this button. This was quite the performance car at the dawn of the muscle car age, almost before the dawn of the official muscle car age. There was a singing group called Jan and Dean had a song about the little old lady from Pasadena, and one of the lines was, in a rickety old garage with a brand new shiny red super, super stock Dodge, and that's what this would be, a super stock Dodge. So that image was always burned in my mind as a 14-year-old. And there's just so much torque, it just pulls so hard. See, back in the 60s, when you bought performance, it also meant you bought no warranty or limited warranty. If they find out you raced the car, your warranty was null and void. As I said a million times in 66, when you bought the Hemi, it came with a 90-day warranty. Three months, that was it, you're on your own. And of course, performance was a trade-off. You know, nowadays, well, certainly with a Tesla, you get full performance without any work on your part at all. But, you know, when you get a Hellcat or any of those kind of cars, you can drive them just like regular cars. They don't overheat. Uh, they don't ping. You know, they, they just no problems with them. They, you know, all that has been worked out. But back in the day, when you bought a, a super stock Dodge like this, especially a Max Wedge with 13 and a half compression, they would tell you, do not drive on the street because it would, the plugs would load up and then you wouldn't get it started. It was just, but they were fast. Speed was a lot of hard work on your part when you did the FDI. Yeah. Speed was a lot of work and you paid for it. If you wanted speed back in the day, you couldn't get an air conditioner because the 
the pulleys couldn't take the speed, they couldn't take the power, the alternator couldn't take the revs. I mean, there's just all kinds of reasons why. When you grow up in a little town in New England, these cars are never in your town. They're always two towns over. There was a guy who was a construction worker or maybe a plumber or something that made some money, and they would buy something like this and it would be their whole life, you know? They'd race it on weekends and they'd get the pretty girl because they had the fastest car. You know, all that kind of nonsense. Hilarious. No power steering, no power brake. But at least now it has brakes. But again, it's that thing. I don't know if this really is cool or it's the fact that it was cool when I was a kid. So consequently, it's still cool to me. See, I still think it's pretty cool. It just looks mean. You know, black wall tires, dog dish hubcaps. As long as you're not trying to parallel park this thing, it's, it's actually pretty good. I like this big goofy steering wheel. 64, Chrysler is doing pretty good. They had the Imperial, they had the Chrysler Turbine car. They're winning races. Times were good. This tack on the floor really makes me laugh. I like the steering wheel, it's oval, it's not round, it just kind of goes like this. I love these big American pieces of iron, you know? Engines are fine, just put some brakes on them and maybe a little better shocks, and you got a beast. My 66 uh, Ford 7 liter, I love that thing with the 427 Rouch in it. Ah. That was two years later than this. This just has a raw edge that I find attractive. Just like that friend you had in high school, you know? He wasn't particularly good looking, but if you were in some place where there was trouble and you got in a fight, eh, he would take care of it for you, you know? If we were down south, this is what they would have called a rum runner. You know, you put a big tank in it, you fill it with uh, moonshine, go tear through the hills of North Carolina, cops on your tail. These electric cutouts are great. You just go, what? Shut them off. Oh, no, officer, that was another car. As you can see, my car is very quiet. Now when you're out of range. Well, I hope you enjoyed this piece of my childhood. This thing's a lot of fun. If you've uh, had any experience with these, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Right now, I gotta go fill up with gas again. Oh, man. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>